Okay. Right. So Kirsty is absent, huh? Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah. So uh, last week about uh, Monopoly, we uh, we talk about yeah the assumption that uh, we have on Monopoly here, right? So take a look of this one, right? We yeah. So uh, we have three assumptions for uh, Monopoly, and this is one very big okay assumption that we have. Uh, so when we talk about Monopoly, they usually have uh, significant uh, barriers to entry. Okay, and we talk about a lot of barriers to entry, right? Okay, so uh, yeah, so we talk about six of them. And yeah, we will talk about natural monopoly uh, very soon. Okay, yeah, very soon, All right? But we uh, we did focus on uh, the first five, uh, the first five of them. Okay, yeah, so barriers to entry, and then we uh, went back to um, drawing the curve, okay? So now we understand uh, why uh, when we are drawing uh, a diagram for imperfect competition, it's going to be a downward sloping curve, okay, because of market power, okay? And in the case of monopoly, because monopoly is basically the market, because there's only one firm in this market. So the firm is the market, and that's why you, you see that uh, market demand curve already, okay, yeah? Yeah, so there are a few uh, explanations for the downward sloping demand curve. Okay, right. Uh, and then we talk about yeah, how do we come up with that ML curve? Okay, yeah. And you know we did look at the table once again. And yeah, yeah. So right now I'm pretty sure you you remember how to calculate um, the ML. Okay, for each additional unit that we produce. Okay, so the ML curve is, is always uh, beneath the demand curve, right? Yeah. So if we know uh, all the information, then we can start drawing uh, the rest of the curves. Okay, for the monopoly, right? So here, okay. So let's do it step by step. Okay, right. So. Uh, so once we have uh, uh, known, okay, how to draw uh, draw a demand curve and ML curve, then we can start putting an MC curve uh, to the diagram. Okay, so now I want you to uh, you know just scrap yourself a paper, uh, try to draw uh, a monopoly, okay, diagram. Okay, try to draw a monopoly diagram. It's it's just the same as as the one that you drew for uh, imperfect competition. Because if you still remember, imperfect competition, the diagram is for uh, all the market structures beside uh, uh, perfect competition. Okay, so monopoly uh, is not perfect competition, and that's why okay we are going to use that diagram for this market structure here. Okay, all right, yeah. So um, right. Okay, so you you know, um, I think I'm gonna give you uh, uh yeah two to three minutes to uh to draw the diagram and and so you know once again look at this look at the steps here right so once you know uh how to draw the demand curve and the ML curve then you know draw yourself well wait a second draw yourself a marginal cost curve okay and then right so you need to think about where 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 does a monopolist okay maximize their profit okay right because you need to find that point for the maximization uh you know the profit maximization output All right yeah and the third step here okay so what curve do we need to draw to calculate the firm's actual actual level of profit or loss right we know we still have to draw an average cost curve okay and and the level of the average cost curve will always determine uh, whether you are earning a profit or a loss okay it doesn't really matter if, if you are in perfect competition or, or imperfect competition okay the average cost curve always determines whether you earn profits uh, or loss okay so that is the third step that you have to uh, work on and and finally, okay, so so this is the task, 
Okay, I want you to draw a monopoly uh, diagram that can show abnormal profits. Okay, all right. So abnormal profit is just the same as economic profit, right? They're the same. Okay, just different expression. All right. So this is what you have to draw. Okay, number four, and also, uh, you know, draw the one that can show normal profit as well. Okay. And of course, at the end, you, you know there will be task six. Yeah, is to draw, okay, the curve that will show losses, right? So here, I want you to draw three diagrams that show different results, okay? At normal profits, normal profits, and losses, okay, right? And at the end, uh, it, it'll be great if you can also show me yeah, this is show me on on um, on the one, okay, at four, at number four. So if if they are not trying to profit maximize, okay, they, if if they are not trying to maximize the profit, if they are trying to maximize the revenue, okay, uh, which output and price will they produce? Okay, all right, okay. So four, five, six, seven, all right. Just try to finish uh, all tasks here right okay so um, yeah three to five minutes I guess okay let's see if you can finish all all the diagrams here in five minutes okay yeah if you have any questions feel free to ask okay
Okay, yeah. The Wi-Fi signal at my home is really bad today. Cannot really uh, connect to my um, iPad. So when you look at the screen, this should be the foundation of your diagram, right? Okay, and and you just have to follow, uh, yeah, the steps, okay, in this slide here, right, to finish the tasks, okay. So um, how many diagrams have you finished? Have you finished all three of them? Hello, have you finished the diagrams? Or you you forgot everything that you you learned from part one? Hello, hello, anyone, anyone here? Hello? Okay, uh, so Andre, can you show me the diagrams very quickly? Yeah, of course, uh, if you want to show me the diagrams, uh, uh, you know, Personally, you can send me the pictures, okay, while well, WhatsApp, right? I can take a look of the diagrams and see if you are doing the, the, the right job, right? But here, um, yeah. Okay, anyone who can uh, share? Yeah, 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 Andrew, okay. Uh, could you put it, like, push push it in, yeah, a little bit more, so that we can see that. Right, okay, okay, just give me, uh, all right, um, so here, so let's take a look at this. Okay, so normal profit, okay, losses over there, all right, profit over there. There, okay. Um, well, I would say, okay, for the profit one, uh, you are doing it correctly, but for the normal profit and for the losses, uh, you made some mistakes. Okay, all right. So, so yeah, yeah. So turn off the camera and you know, yeah, look at look at the diagram again. Okay, yeah. So you you have done you have you have done correctly for um uh the abnormal profit one. Okay, but for normal profits and losses, okay, you still have to uh, uh, correct, okay, yeah, your diagrams, right? So, um, right, okay, I don't know what your progress is right now, but here, okay, uh, so very quickly, I'm just going to show you uh, uh, for the first one, okay, how to make a uh, abnormal profit, okay, in this diagram, or how to make a... a and uh, economic profit in this diagram. So yeah, so we know that uh, the first step here. Oh, oops, yeah, here. Right, the first step here. So you just have to put a MC curve to your diagram. All right. So yeah, very quickly and like a Nike tick like this. Right. So put an MC label on here. Okay. So that's that's done. Okay. Yep, and see, look at this. 
So the second step, once again, yeah, just like what we do for a perfect competition, okay, we are going to find the profit maximization point, right? So right here, okay, AML equals MC. So we're just here. Okay, so we're just here. Okay, so this point here, yeah, this quantity Q1 here, that is our profit maximization point, right? Okay, and we know that if we are uh, producing at Q1, we are going to sell it at P1 up here. Okay, yeah, so we just have to draw a straight line till it hits the demand curve. So that is uh, the price that we are selling, okay, in Monopoly. Right, and at the end, we need to know this one here. Okay, we need to draw ourselves an average cost curve so that we know if we are earning a profit or not. Okay, yep, and and you see here, as long as the average cost curve is lower than the average revenue, then we are going to earn a profit, right? Okay, and, and we know that demand curve here is equal to average revenue. Okay, yep, right. So, it's very simple to determine uh, uh, where we can get uh, profit and where we can get normal profit and where we can get, get losses. Okay, as long as AR is, 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 is higher or more than AC at Q1, then we are going to get a profit. Okay, we are going to get an, an economic profit. Okay, yep. And when they are equal, then you will get a normal profit. Okay, and when the average cost curve is higher than the average revenue curve, okay, or average revenue, the amount at Q1, then you will get losses. All right, so here, yeah, I can just simply put, uh, uh, you know, an ATC curve right here. Yeah. Right. Okay. Remember this point here. It has to be uh, uh, the lowest of the average cost curve. Right. And say ATC. Right. So here we can see at Q1, at Q1, the average cost, the average total cost is here. Right. Okay. And at Q1, the average revenue is here. Okay, all right? So same concept that we use uh, uh, from perfect competition. And then we know that this area here, okay, the blue box, that is the abnormal profit. That's the area of abnormal profit, right? Okay, does it make sense? Okay. All right, so this is how you get an abnormal profit, okay, right? And yeah, so so yeah, as long as at Q1, a so the AR, the average revenue, is higher than the average cost curve, okay? So higher than AC, then you will get an economic profit right here, okay? All right, so with that being said, so if we want to find a normal profit so we just have to simply well, let's let me use uh, another color okay so we know that at normal profit AR is equal to AC okay so here is your AR okay this one here is your AR at Q1 right so how do you make it okay at Q1 AR is equal to AC so you just have to draw an ATC curve that is somewhere like this All right ATC let's say uh, this one this two okay so as long as you draw a curve that is um, you know yeah when you are using Q1 as the output and well maybe I can draw it better yeah. okay yeah this one is better yeah All right Okay, as long as when you are producing it at Q1 and the AR there, okay, is equal to AC right there, then you will see 
Okay, if you do that, there will be okay. If you're using ATC two, if you're using ATC two, then you will have normal problem. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, is it clear? Okay, so so Edric, do you know uh, what what your mistake was in your diagram? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So with that being said, once again, if you draw an ATC curve that is even beyond, okay, uh, uh, ATC two, okay, it's even higher. It's even higher. Let's let's use another uh, color. Uh, let's say right here. Okay. All right, like this. Okay. Let's call that ATC three. All right. So look at this at ATC three. At ATC three, okay, and at Q one, if you are producing at at Q one, your average cost is up here, okay, is up here. Your average cost is up here. Let's call that C, right? Your average cost is up here at C, and your average revenue is just P one, okay, it's just P one right here, okay, because at Q one you can see right. You are going to have an average revenue right, right here at at P one. So that's why you can see the result. This orange box here, okay, that's your loss. Okay, so yeah, all right. So, so you can see three results in one diagram. Okay. So here you have your abnormal uh, profit, okay. And you know if you are at ATC two, then you will have a normal profit. And if you're ATC three, then you will have a loss, okay. All right, okay. So you know you can you can see all the results from one single line, okay. So here, well, let me use another color, purple. Yeah, from here. Okay, this line here, right? This line here, this line here. You can see, okay, all the results just by looking at this. Okay, as long as you are able to find that profit maximization quantity, okay, which is Q one, then you are able to find, you know, all the results by using different uh, ATC curves. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. So this is how you can draw, uh, you know. And monopoly diagram with different results. Okay, all right, just like that. Okay, all right. Okay, so now we still have one more question. Okay, and here number seven, right? If we are not trying to maximize uh, the revenue, okay. So at what output and price are we going to produce that? Okay, so when we are not trying to uh, maximize the profit, okay, so where are we going to uh, 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 sell our products? So how much output are we going to sell for, uh, you know, the monopoly? If we are trying to maximize the revenue, so where is the output that we are going to sell? Where is it? If we are trying to, yeah, all right, yeah. Yeah, that's good, right? When M out is equal to zero, okay. So, so once again, yeah, we we are we are, you know repeating the same stuff that we have learned uh, in part one, okay. So here, when M out is zero, right? You know that when M out is zero, okay, it means if we produce one more extra unit, okay, that one extra unit will give you a negative uh, additional revenue. So here, when M out is zero, you yeah, you have already maximized your revenue. Okay, so if we know here, this this point here, let's say this is Q two, right? That is your revenue. Okay, maximization point. Okay, right here. So you just have to draw once again a straight line, like this. Okay, and then you know this price here. That is your average. That is your average revenue, okay. 
yeah so let's let's call it p2 okay so p2 is the average revenue that you are going to get or the price that you are going to sell when you are trying to maximize your revenue okay and and yeah at, at the same time you can see if you are doing uh, revenue maximization here okay and let's say you are using ATC1 all right you are still able to earn an economic profit right so that is here the purple box here okay yeah and if we are using the same uh uh you know con construction here with all the uh, average cost curves okay if you are using the green average cost curve what is the result if you're using the green average cost curve what is the result in this case yeah there will be a loss right yeah because you see here when you are selling at a p2 okay yeah your average revenue okay the p2 your your average cost is up here okay so your cost if you're using atc2 will be here c2 all right let's put a very small label well sorry yeah, right here c2 so c2 is bigger than p2 so you are going to have a loss okay yeah the loss is just the area that i'm shading right here okay that's your loss okay yeah and when you're using atc3 it will give you a big loss okay all right all right okay right okay so if you want to make a a, a normal profit using revenue maximization then i guess you have to draw another uh atc curve Okay, yeah, you might have to draw another one that will give you, uh, you know, when AR is equal to AC at Q2, all right? Just like, you know, something like this. Okay, all right, let's call it ATC4. Okay, if you have ATC4, right, on the screen, then you are able to get, okay, a normal profit because you see at Q2, Okay, when you are selling it at P2, okay, yeah, when you're using ATC4, AR is equal to a ATC, okay, all right, yeah, so there you go, all right, do some more practice on uh, this diagram here, and also don't forget the diagram for uh, perfect competition, okay, right, it, it takes some more practice, you, you, you always need to, you know, grab yourself a paper and, uh, yeah, try drawing it. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, it's it, yeah. It's not. It's not going to work. Okay. It takes more practice. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. All right. This is how we draw um, uh, the diagram for monopoly. Okay. And for the other uh, and for the other two market structures, you are going to use the same diagram. Okay. All right. You are going to use the same diagram. So as long as you know how to draw this, then you know how to draw the diagram for the other two market structures. Okay, all right. So this one is very important. You you really need to know. Okay, how how this works. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. So uh yeah. So let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. Let's move on. All right, so now we know how to draw a monopoly diagram uh, when they are using profit maximization and when they are using revenue maximization. And there are yeah always three results that you can make in one diagram. Okay, yeah, right. So you need to know the drill, how to uh, uh, get your diagram to show one particular result. Okay, right, all right. Okay, so uh, here, yeah, I'm just gonna, yeah, I just put some uh, uh, diagram uh, sample here to show you, okay, uh, how you get that. Well, it's just the same as the one that I, I just drew, okay, All right? And for uh, the revenue maximization, uh, yeah, right, is when ML is equal to zero. So you just have to draw a straight line, and then you'll find that, uh, yeah, revenue maximization price, and yeah right that's all you have to do okay yeah uh but here all right 
uh, I want you to talk about look right here in the diagram. So when you are uh, uh, answering the question in Monopoly or in any market structure that has market power, that has certain level of market power, okay, right? So we call them imperfect competition. Okay, so uh, there is one uh, assumption that we always make uh, for those uh, markets, all right? So you always want to talk about this, okay? So when you are talking about uh, these kinds of uh, companies or these kinds of uh, market structure, you always want to uh, emphasize one thing, okay? So you want to emphasize uh, those markets, they like to, okay, well, they like to, So they like to raise up the price. Okay. So first of all, yeah, if you see a market with market power, okay, they always have this one behavior, and we always have to assume they they, they have, have have this behavior here. Okay. They always like to raise up the price, and they control control the output. Uh oh. Yeah, it's already in the boundary. Uh, output. Okay, yep, they always like to raise up the price and control the output for higher profit. Okay, or profits. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, right here. So this one here is very important. Okay, so you can see, uh, well, this diagram here is now is just getting too messy. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to uh, the one that we have here. Okay, right here. Yeah, so you know, you look at this. Okay, this is why they have this kind of behavior, right? Originally, if they are trying to reach if they're trying to reach allocative efficiency, like um, like perfect competition does, okay, they are going to sell it at when demand is equal to MC, okay, which is here, which is here, okay, because we know demand is also uh, uh, representing uh, marginal benefit, so they are going to sell it at here, yeah, at this output. Okay, at this at this output right here, okay, at this price when they're trying to get allocative efficiency. Okay? But now because they are monopoly, okay, because they are monopoly, so we can see they always like to raise up the price, okay, higher than where they will sell it at allocative efficiency. So yeah, allocative efficiency it's right here, yeah. The price is right here, and when you are being a monopoly, when you are trying to uh, maximize your profit, you always like to sell it at this point, way higher than the one that you use uh, when you are trying to get allocative efficiency. Okay, and at the same time, look at this. When you are trying to get allocative efficiency, the output should be around here. Okay, but when you are a monopoly then you are going to control your output as well, right? At this point, okay? Yeah, and at the end from this diagram, we realize when you have a certain level of market power, then you tend to have a behavior, okay, right here. You tend to raise up the price and you control the output so that you can get higher profits. Okay, and that is not going to happen when you see a uh, perfect competition. Okay, yeah, because you know, in perfect competition, it's always uh, uh, allocative efficient. All right, and in the long run, we don't get any economic profit. Okay, but not in the case, okay, when you are looking at monopoly. Right. Okay, so this is one thing that you always have to remember. And when you are trying to explain your diagram, you always have to talk about this. Okay, you always have to talk about this. Right, yeah, okay. So in, in Monopoly, we always focus on uh, one of the results. Okay, in Monopoly, we always focus on number four. 
we always focus on number four. Okay, so we we kind of always assume when you are being a monopoly, then yeah, you should be able to get a huge abnormal profit, or you should be able to get a huge uh, economic profit. Okay, so yeah, so this is something that we uh, impress, uh, uh, implicitly uh, assume. Okay, in monopoly. Yeah, because when, when you think about this, when you are being a mon monopoly, there's no competition, and you are a very big firm. So we kind of assume it's way easier for those uh, firms to get uh, economic profits, okay, when they are in, in, in that market. All right, okay, yeah. So, yeah, so these are some tiny bits that, that we need to know, okay, when we are studying uh, this chapter here, okay, all right, yeah, okay. All right, okay. So after this, so let's take a look of this question here. Okay, so take a look of this question here. Okay, so compared to perfect competition, what is the difference, if any, okay, between uh, the short run and long run uh, equilibrium of a monopolist? So in perfect competition, okay, so if we are earning, if we are earning uh, an economic profit in the short run, what will happen in the long run? So what will happen in the long run? So if, if you are if you are a perfect competition and you are earning uh, economic profit in the short run, so what will happen in the long run? Hello. Yeah, more firms they will enter the market, and eventually, what is the result? Yeah, a normal profit. But do you think it will happen uh, the same to a monopoly? Why not? So now we have the yeah. Okay, so that's good, right? So yeah. So first of all, there is there there are there are huge barriers to entry. So no firms uh can get in. Okay. And yeah, we assume there's only one firm. Okay. So yes. Right. So you guys have the right idea. Okay. So here we know that if you talk about short run and long run in monopoly, it's going to be different than the one in perfect competition. Okay. So in monopoly we are going to assume in the short run and long run is going to be the same okay if you are earning abnormal profit yeah like like what i just said we always focus on abnormal profit when you are earning abnormal profits in the short run then you can still earn abnormal profits in the long run okay because there's no there's no other firms that are able to get into the market even when you are, uh, you know, getting yourself into the long run, all right? Because you have a huge barrier to entry, okay? All right, yeah, so that's the difference, okay? So here, for Monopoly, the results will be the same, okay, for short run and long run. When you are earning abnormal profit in the short run, then you, you will be able to earn abnormal profit in the long run as well, okay? So that's how powerful it is for Monopoly. Okay. All right. Yeah. So make sure you, you you get that part. Okay. I'm not going to uh, put the points uh, on on the screen. All right. So you you know. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that's the difference. And okay. So let's let's have some recap. Like like quick recap. Okay. So what are the three assumptions on monopolies once again? So what are the three? Okay. One firm. And yeah, the second one you just you just told me that. Yeah. Right, high barriers to entry, and the third one is uh, no substitutes. Yeah, there, there's no close uh, substitute. Okay, for monopolies. Okay, so they, they are the three assumptions that we use. All right, that's that's good. Okay, so what about the barriers to entry? So give me f just four. Okay, we have six, but you just have to give me four. Okay, six barriers to entry. Okay, branding. Okay, remember, right, when you are able to get your uh, brand, okay. 
to have some sort of uh, 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 you know brand loyalty or rep reputation, then you will have a uh, more market power. Okay, legal, yeah, legal barrier like patent, copyright, okay, or government regulations, right? Okay, economy scale when you are able to uh, produce your goods at a lower cost. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, there's one more, one more. Come on, just give me one more. Okay, aggressive tactics, right? Because you have much more resources than uh, other competitors, other potential competitors, okay? Yeah, even when they are able to get into the market when you are using aggressive tactics, they will be eliminated, okay, in no time because they are not able to compete with you, all right? Yeah, so yeah, so four of them, all right? Try to make good use of them when you are answering the questions, okay? So yeah, so... You know, look at the screen, yeah, so there are the answers, right, okay, for the assumptions here, and the barriers to entry, okay, economy of scale, legal barriers, okay, natural monopolies, we are going to talk about it very soon, and, yeah, branding, and, yeah, aggressive uh, tactics, okay, all right, okay, all right, so, let's go to natural monopolies then, okay, Yep. So natural monopoly here is a very uh, unusual uh, case. Okay, it's a very unusual case. But uh, well, you will see why. All right. So take a look at this. So natural monopoly. Uh, yeah, I think I asked this question last week, and and yeah, yeah, and, and well, I, I'm gonna show you the answer. Okay. So natural monopoly is when okay a single firm can produce at a lower cost. Than two or more firms because of large economies of scale. Okay, so this is why it is unusual. Okay, usually when we are talking about competition, okay, when you have higher competition, the price or the cost will be lower in general. Okay, yeah, because people they are very competitive and you always have to lower your cost in order to uh, become more more competitive in the market. Okay, but in this case, it's the opposite. You are being more efficient when you have only one single firm in that particular market. Okay, all right. So this is what we call a natural monopoly. It's a very special case. Okay, when there's only one firm and they are able to produce at an even lower cost than when you have more competitors in your market. Okay, all right, so that is natural monopoly. And here I have some examples. So why do you think usually for those companies there, uh, the water company, the gas company, the electricity company, they are usually the examples of natural monopolies. Why is that? Why do you think if I'm opening a water company, it's always better to have just one firm providing the entire market than uh, two or more firms providing uh, uh, water to the entire market? What do you think? Yeah, any ideas? Oh, okay. Oh, Ian, that that's good. That's good. More firms means you know they need to have more sets of pipes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so you you can imagine this. If you only need one set of pipes, yeah. If, if you only need yeah, it it will be in 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 efficient. If you only need one set of pipe uh pipelines to supply the water uh to the entire city. That's perfect, okay? Yeah, imagine you have to you have to build up another set of pipelines to supply to the same city. Then you are wasting the resources, okay? Do you get it? Yeah, same goes to electricity and um, gas, okay? All the uh, utilities uh, companies, okay? So you know that's why it's always good to have just one single company to produce it, okay? Rather than uh, more than one. All right, 
okay right so here so take a look at this right we know that uh you know the major fixed costs of water supplies okay yeah talking about the pipelines and um uh, maybe the, the the water station okay the water supply station right so they are some very uh uh yeah, very high amount of costs that we will have if we are okay setting up we if we are starting up a water supply company. Okay, so you, you see here the fixed cost is huge for those companies. Okay, so how do we lower the cost then? So here you have an equation of uh, ATC. Okay, so you, you because we know when we are starting up. A utility firm like water supply, the total cost is going to be huge because we have a huge fixed cost. Okay, so how do we lower the average total cost here? How do we do it? Uh, lower variable cost. Well, yeah, yeah. So, uh, for the first one, for the first one here, yeah, it, it it might work. Okay, it might work. But in this case, in this case, okay, yeah, it's going to be more efficient if you are able to boost, uh, boost up this number here. Okay, right? Yeah. But you, you, I would say both of the answers, uh, in the chat box, they are all valid. Okay, but here. Uh, we would like to focus on okay the output. So as long as we are able to maximize the output, then the average total cost should be lower based on the equation itself. Okay, right? Yeah, and that's why it goes back to the definition of natural monopoly. Okay, so is yeah. Take a look at this. When you are being a single firm, okay, in the market, right? you are more able to produce it at a lower average cost than when you have two or more firms. Okay, right? Yep. So imagine if you have two water supply companies instead of one. What do you think will happen to your revenue as one of the uh, water supply companies? If now there, there are two, yeah, Okay, right? Okay, your revenue is, 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 is going to be decreased because now, okay, you don't need to produce that much output anymore. Okay, yeah, because part of the output will be shared by the other water supply company. Okay, right? So your market share is being reduced when you have more than one company in this market. Okay? So when you are being just one company in this market, you are able to sell the output to the entire city or to the entire uh, market that you have. So that will give you a higher output. Okay, when you are able to get a higher output, then you know this one here, okay, is going to go up, right? And your average total cost is going to go down. Okay, so uh, if you are able to increase the output more to achieve the results here, what is the term for this? What is the technical term for this uh, action here? You're trying to, you know, increase the output in order to, you know, reduce the average total cost. So what what is the term? What is the economic term here? Anyone? Yeah, as long as we are able to increase the output, then our average total cost should be lower, right? Economies of scale. Okay? Yeah, economies of scale. All right, so right here we we are yeah we yeah we are trying to talk about economies of scale, okay yeah look at this, because of larger economies of scale, okay yeah right just like what I said, if you have one single firms that can produce to the entire market, you can enjoy a larger econo economies of scale, 
all right? And that's why it's always better to have just one firm, okay, to supply this particular good than more than one, okay, more than one firm, all right? Okay, yeah? So it's, it's very rational for just one firm to supply this kind of good to the entire market, okay? All right, yeah? And, and yeah, that's why it's a very special case. Competition here is not desired. It's not desirable, okay, right? And yeah, we have actually uh, discussed, uh, uh, you know, the arguments already, okay? Competition is not desirable because, right, based on the answer you gave me in the beginning, okay? Yeah, if you build up another set of pipelines, okay, there will be duplication of resources. So you're wasting the resources, okay, right? Yeah, just like the example I gave you. If one set of pipeline is, is already enough for the entire city, yeah, if you have one more firm getting into the market, then you have to build up another set of pipelines. So you're wasting, okay, the costs that you use for the second set of pipelines, okay? So that is not efficient, okay? And at the same time, when you are, okay, having one uh, more than one firm in this market, then the economy of scale cannot be fully exploited, okay? Yeah, because you know, now two or more firms, they're sharing the, 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 the market share, okay? And at the end, they cannot enjoy the maximum uh, economies of scale, yeah, which will bring them, uh, which will bring them a lower average cost, okay, right? So right here, we know the result why natural monopoly is always better off, okay, with just one firm selling to the entire market is because of, you know, this result. Competition is not desirable, okay, and because of competition in natural monopolies, you will see, you know, either allocative inefficiency or productive inefficiency, they will all go up, okay, right? Yeah, because, you know, when you're wasting resources, you are not able to get allocative efficiency. And when you are, uh, well, or, or, or I should say, you, your allocative efficiency will, will not be able to achieve for sure because the in inefficiency in this part is getting higher and higher. Okay, and when you are not able to make good use of economies of scale, then your productive inefficiency is going to be even worse, right? Okay, because we know that if you have a better economies uh, economies of scale, then yeah, uh, your cost level should be lower and lower. Yeah, it could be at the lowest point. Yeah, it could be somewhere uh, at at a very very uh, low level. Okay, but now. If you have competition, then you will not be achieved that as well, or you are going to make this disadvantage here even worse. Okay, all right, yeah. So that's why you will have this result when you have competition in the markets that we mentioned, like you know, gas market, water market, electricity market, etc., etc. Okay, usually uh, it happens in uh, the utility. Uh, sector, okay, because of the huge fixed cost, okay. So as long as you know that that market requires some huge fixed costs, then it will be more beneficial to have natural monopolies, okay, right. So this is the whole key point, okay. Why it is better to have natural monopoly is because yeah, the fixed cost, okay, when you have a very high fixed cost. Is always better if if just one company uh, which can provide to the entire market, okay, all right, yeah. Uh, and in this case, in natural monopoly, we can use another diagram uh, to explain. Okay, we can use another diagram to explain it. Okay, so uh, well here. Uh, I'm going to stop it. I'm go I'm going to stop it here. Okay, I'm going to stop here. All right. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's it's too much. Okay. Yeah. So for natural monopoly, yeah, just to make sure that you are going to draw another uh set of diagram, which is yeah, well, it's, it's it's almost the same as the normal monopoly diagram that you are going to draw. 
Okay, but uh, there will be some little tricks that we are going to uh, uh, have to use. Okay, all right. So uh, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm going to let you go. Okay, yeah. Is is getting more complicated here. Okay, so so next week we are going to go through. Okay, how to draw a diagram for uh, a natural monopolies. Okay, all right, all right. So yeah, I'm going. I'm going to let you go to the other class. Okay, all right. I'll see you guys next week. Okay, all right. Bye bye. Bye 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 bye.